my text is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. We all heard this verse before, uh, but I really want to just focus on this part and see what the Lord says, okay? You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your, position, your possessions and stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord, what he will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be what? Afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. That's what we want to focus on today. That's the main text, but I'm going to go through why that was said. This morning, my topic for you, it's a simple one that we have to understand it in certain situations. My text is simple. It is, leave it alone. That's the text. And you're going to see why I said that in the text. Now, before we understand what that scripture said, before we, 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 we find out why did God say that, we're going to see what had happened. Now, King Jehoshaphat was a great king. He was a great man. He was a great leader. But things was about to take a turn very quickly. How many know that things in your life, no matter how good it's been going, no matter how healthy you are, no matter what the bank account says, no matter the joy you have right now, but just like that, something can happen. Something can happen just like that. And the thing about it, in the scripture, it came unexpectedly and it came fast. Trouble was coming from all directions for this king. They were about to go war against him from every side. He was surrounded. He was surrounded. Now, when the king heard that, just like you and I, if things start happening like that, he is a human being too. The Bible said he was afraid. He was afraid. But what did he do when he was afraid? What do you do when bad news come your way? What do you do when things happen that is out of your control? What do you do when something blindsides you? What do you do when everything is going right, but now you're knocked down to the lowest part of your life? What do you do when one thing happens after the next, one situation after the next, and things are happening and it's happening, and then one day you get that phone call and it's your mother-in-law and she wants to stay two more weeks? What do you do when trouble keeps coming and coming and bad news after bad news? Things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. When you walk with Jesus, when your life is with God, problems are going to happen. The devil don't like to see you happy all the time. The devil don't like to see you healthy all the time. He don't like to see you smiling. And suddenly something's going to happen. Suddenly. It's coming fast. Well, what did he do? The king, after being afraid, after getting the news... What do you do? How do you handle bad news? What are some things that you can reflect on that happened to you and how did you handle it? How did you get through it? Some people today, the first thing they do when they hear bad news is they give up. They forget how blessed they was. They forget where God has taken them from. He was a king. He had everything. But he was also afraid. It doesn't matter your stature in life. When things happen, you will get affected because you're a human being. The Bible said, Jehoshaphat called for something. When we have troubles in our lives, some people, you know what they call for? A friend. They call for a drink. They call for a week off of work so they can soak in their misery. They call back the ex group of friends that God delivered them from to reminisce on times that made them feel good. They call everything else except the name of the Lord. That is the mistake we cannot make today. 
That is the mistake that when things are going to come your way, you know who to call on. Jehoshaphat called on his God. He called on the one that he knew can help him. And not only did he call, he called a fast. When was the last time us as a church and as a family called a prayer meeting in our house with our families? When was the last time we took time out to fast and put a subject before God and say, Lord, I need you in this one. Lord, I can't handle it. When was the last time we held hands and cried for our children and prayed after our marriage and asked God to fix the things that we can't fix? When was the last time we have done that? And because you do that, then you can experience what chapter 17 says, too many people want to experience to stand still and watch God, but they want to do what they want. All they focus about that part is, I'm going to stand still. You cannot stand still and expect God to fight your battles when you do nothing to line it up for him. We want gods to fight our battles, but we're never in church. We want God to bless our finances. Give me a raise, but we don't pay our time. We want God to work on our marriage, but you spend no time talking to each other. Too many times we want to stand still and let God do everything. When God is saying, you got to do your part, you do what you could do, and I will do what you can't do. We live in a world today that we are, like Pastor always says, the microwave mentality. Push a button. Boom. That's how some of us want. We want a short prayer for a big answer. Hey, don't get me wrong. Sometimes that will happen. God can answer your prayer at any time, in any form, in any amount of words. But there are some things the Bible said. What did it say? There are some situations will only go with what? Prayer and fasting. I want to tell you that's a Great combination to have. That is something that when you mix it together, you see an outcome. When you mix a prayer and faith and a fast together, and you do that, and you send it upstairs, then the blessing will come downstairs. Understand the power you have. Understand that there is power in prayer. Prayer is the one thing, it's a weapon for you and I. You want to go to a spiritual warfare? Learn how to pray. You want to see a breakthrough in your life? Know how to call on God. You want to get a blessing you never had before? Fast for a few days. Use the weapons God has given you. Use the authority as a child of God that this is what God armored me with. I can fight this battle. Understand the strength you have. Understand the position you are in. Understand there's a reason he sacrificed his life. He sacrificed his life not just to give you a mediocre life. He did it that you will have eternal life up there and you will be prepared to face anything down here. Understand your power that you got. He said... He said, God, I am afraid they are coming from every angle. They are coming against me, Lord. I can't do it. There are some things you are not going to be able to do, and that's okay. You know why? Because you wasn't qualified to do it. <coughs> I'll give you an example. Friday night at work finishing up the last deal, the customer's in the finance office, the contract's already signed, the bow is on the car, the detail kid locked the keys in the car while it's running. Nine o'clock, we close at eight, customers are angry, they already paid the price for the car, they already bought the car, they already sign the insurance over, put the VIN number in, have the title in hand, it's their car, but now they can't get it. We at the dealership, all we could do is try to get the car door open. These new cars these days, it, 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 don't even get me started. We tried for hours. We called the mechanic. 
Hey, he's like, I'm a mechanic. I'm not a locksmith. Locksmith, good idea. I said, that's a great, let's, let's call on someone who is qualified for this problem. We can only do so much. So we called the locksmith, and at that moment, I wish I was a locksmith. The man worked 23 seconds for $165. I said, but sir, you told us over the phone it was 120. He said, supply and demand, my son. He said, you said 120. He said, but when I came here, and you have no other option, it's 9.30 at night, it is 165. What did we do? We paid the 165. The door was open like that. Why? Because this man was qualified to do what we can't. He had the tools to open up something, to do something, to bring something out that we couldn't do. And that is the same thing with how God is for you. God has the tool that can open any door to your circumstances. You can do so much, but there are some things you have to make a call for. There are some things you have to go to someone who is qualified to, to answer that problem. There are some situations you cannot get yourself out of, but with a call, with a prayer, with a fast, with a cry, you will see someone come to your rescue and he has already charged nothing. It is free for him. He's not going to charge you. He paid the price on the cross. You owe him nothing but a thanks. Remember who you are calling to. You remember you are calling to a God that is qualified to heal any situation. He is qualified to deliver anybody. He is qualified to bless anything. He was once a man who raised the dead. He can do it again. He has parted the Red Seas. He has opened blind eyes. He has healed limbs. He has made the lame walk. Listen. Listen who you have. Oh, my. When you understand who you have and you understand your part to do, then you can stand still and see what will happen. Then you can stand still and see what God can do. You are not alone. But I want to tell you that you are not alone in the situation, but sometimes you have to leave the situation alone. You are not alone in it, but sometimes you have to leave it alone because you can't fix it. It is out of your hands. You can't be troubled about it no more because if you go and try to do something, you might mess it up even more. You know what was one of the, 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 the salesmen who sold a car? You know what, what his, uh, his answer was? Well, let's break the window. Let's break the window. See, if we had, sometimes if we take matters into our own hands, we make it worse. He wants to break the window when God says, I'm sending somebody who was qualified. Now, he said, stand still. Do not be afraid. I want to tell you this week, some of you, you're going into this week afraid of a situation that's going to happen. I want to tell you, God is saying through his word to you, do not be afraid. You have cried to me, you have begged me, you have prayed to me, you fasted in front of me, your life is clean, you did your part, now just stand still and watch the salvation of who? Of the Lord. Not salvation of man, but salvation from heaven. Because this thing you are facing, I don't know what you are facing, but it, you cannot fix it. This news that you're going to get this week, it's going to discourage you. But don't be dismayed like the thing says. It says, be encouraged. Stand still. And you know who was the person that sent that to Jehoshaphat? It was a young man who sent that message. Uh, his name, I'm drawing blank his name. Um, anyhow. The Bible says that this man who sent the message to the king was a godly man. 
It was a man who had a relationship with God like no other. It's a man who spent time with God. It's a man who prayed to God. It's a man who God felt fit to give the word, to give to Jehoshaphat. Some people these days, they like to give words. They want to tell you this and they want to tell you that. But what, how did they get the word? Their life is not a pleasing to God. So I want to tell you, be careful who you take a word from. Be careful who you take a word from. The reason why this word came to pass is because it came from God. Amen. And today uh, in this society, you see a lot of people say things just to say things to make you happy. But when God says it, it's not just to make you happy, it's to make it come through. Amen. So you're going to get a blessing this week. You're going to get an answer this week. You're going to get something that you've been afraid of because it's been holding you back it's been putting pressure upon you night after night day after day month after month yes you've been carrying this thing yes yes and you have cried and you did your part and now the god is saying hey stand still and reap your reward for what you've done so that's what i'm closing with today stand still and see what god is going to be for you leave it alone and the bible said that they defeated the enemy. The Bible said they won the battle. They won it easily. You're going to win your battle. Tell, say, 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 I am going to win this battle. This thing that I've been afraid of is going away. Say it. My God is going to handle my problem. Now here's the final part of this. He said, after they had won... He said, go down there to the war zone and pick up all the jewelry, all the gold, all the things that the enemy had, that when God defeated the enemy, it was laying on the ground. Now the children of God just can just go and pick up. Some of you, that's where you're going to be at. You're going to go pick up a blessing this week. That thing you wanted, you're just going to be at your feet this week. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. You know what is yours? The victory is yours. The outcome is yours. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. Bow your heads as I close off. I want to pray with you. Father. I thank you. I thank you for privilege to come to you. I thank you that we have a privilege to come to a great God to talk about anything. Not only our small issues, but the things we can't handle. The things that are out of our reach is never out of your reach. And our lives are never out of your reach. Father, bless the people, oh God. Let this word minister to them. Let them get something out of it. Let them be encouraged that knowing no matter what it is they're going through, that's all it is. They're going through it. They're not stuck in it. Hallelujah. Let them understand that your word is going to come to them this week and say, don't worry, son. Don't worry, daughter. I got your back. You leave it alone and watch and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Thank you.